Beloved, greetings to you and to your household in the name of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. I trust that you are well and keeping safe. So, beloved, today we are continuing the studies on the book of Numbers and we are studying Numbers chapters 32 and 33. Beloved, in the previous study, we learned from Numbers chapter 30 about laws concerning vows that are made to the Lord. We also learned from Numbers chapter 31 about God's vengeance on the Midianites who tricked the Israelites into worshipping idols and committing sexual immorality. Beloved, if you missed this study, or any of the other studies on the book of Numbers, please watch it from this channel. And if you have not already subscribed, please subscribe to this channel so that you'll be notified whenever a lesson becomes available. So, beloved, at this point in today's study, Numbers chapters 32 and 33, the Israelites who have been in the wilderness for 40 years are now preparing to cross the Jordan River to enter the promised land. And so, beloved, let's go on and hear the word of the Lord. And verse 1 of Numbers chapter 32 says, The tribes of Reuben and Gad had a lot of livestock, when they saw how suitable the land of Jesa and Gilead was for cattle, they went to Moses, Eliezer, and the leaders of Israel and said, This region which the Lord has helped the Israelites occupy, all the towns are good land for livestock, and we have so much livestock. Please give us this land as our property and do not make us cross the Jordan River and settle there. Beloved, in Numbers chapter 21, the Lord helped the Israelites to defeat three powerful kings who attacked them and the Israelites took possession of their lands. It is this land that the tribes of Reuben and Gad request to settle in because the land have much grass and will be good for their livestock. And so, beloved, when the tribes of Reuben and Gad requested from Moses and the leaders of Israel to give them the pasture land, Moses replied to them in verse 6 and said, do you want to stay here while the other Israelites go to war? How dare you try to discourage the people of Israel from crossing the Jordan into the land which the Lord has given them? That is what your fathers did when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. They went as far as Eshkol Valley and saw the land, but when they returned, they discouraged the people from entering the land which the Lord had given them. The Lord became angry with the people and made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until that whole generation that had displeased him was dead, except Joshua and Caleb. And now you have taken your ancestors' place, a new generation of sinful people ready to bring down the fierce anger of the Lord on Israel again. If you people of Reuben and Gad refuse to follow him, now he will once again abandon all these people in the wilderness and you will be responsible for their destruction. God had commanded the Israelites to cross over the Jordan and take possession of the promised land. 
their inheritance was on the other side of the Jordan River. This is why Moses was angry. Moses was angry because the tribes of Reuben and Gad did not want to cross the Jordan River. And he feared that their attitude would discourage the rest of the tribes from crossing over to enter the promised land. So he reminded them of how God punished their ancestors for refusing to enter the promised land 39 years before. Moses did not want this to happen again, and so he warns the tribes of Reuben and Gad not to do anything that will make the people reluctant to cross over and enter into the promised land. But after Moses told the tribes of Reuben and Gad that they cannot stay behind, while the other tribes cross over and go to war, verse 16 says, The men from the tribe of Reuben and Gad approached Moses and said, Let us build places to keep our sheep, goats, and towns for our wives and children where they can stay and be safe. Then we will prepare to fight and lead the other tribes into battle. We will not return to our homes until all the other tribes have taken possession of the lands assigned to them. We will not take possession of any property among them on the other side of the Jordan because we have received our share here east of the Jordan. Moses answered, if you really mean what you say, then here in the presence of the Lord, get ready to go into battle. All your fighting men are to cross the Jordan and under the command of the Lord, they are to attack our enemies until the Lord defeats them and takes possession of the land. After that, you may return because you will have fulfilled your obligation to the Lord and to the other Israelites. Then the Lord will acknowledge that this land east of the Jordan is yours. But if you do not keep your promise, I warn you that you will be sinning against the Lord. Make no mistake about it. You will be punished for your sin. So build your towns and the enclosures for your sheep, but do what you have promised. The men of God and Reuben said, Say, we will do as you command. So Moses agreed to grant their request and reminded them of the promise they have made that if they did not fight with the other tribes, then they will receive a punishment for their sin. And in verse 28 to 32, Moses gives instructions about this agreement to Eliezer the priest, Joshua and the leaders of Israel because he knew he would die before the Israelites enter the promised land. God has said to Moses that he would join his ancestors in Numbers chapter 27 verse 13. And so, beloved, in verse 29, Moses said to them, If the men of God and Reuben cross the Jordan at the Lord's command, and if with their help you are able to conquer the land, then give them the land of Gilead as their property. But if they do not cross the Jordan and go into battle with you, they are to receive their share of the property in the land of Canaan, as you do. And Joshua chapter 22 
tells us that the tribes of Reuben, Gad, joined by the half tribe of Manasseh, did what they promised to do and helped the Israelites to fight for the land of Canaan. They continued to fight until all of those battles were over and each Israelite tribe was settled in its own property of land in Canaan. Then they returned to their homes on the other side of the Jordan River. So, beloved, we move on to the next and final chapter of today's study, Numbers chapter 33. This chapter gives us a summary of the Israelites' journey from Egypt to Canaan, the promised land. And so, beloved, let's go on and hear the word of the Lord. And verse 1 of Numbers chapter 33 says, This is a list of all the places where the Israelites set up camp after they left Egypt in organized groups under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. At the command of the Lord, Moses wrote down the name of the place each time they set up camp. The people of Israel left Egypt on the 15th day of the first month of the first year, the day after the first Passover. Under the Lord's protection, they left the city of Ramses in full view of the Egyptians, who were burying their firstborn sons that the Lord had killed. By doing this, the Lord showed that he was more powerful than the gods of Egypt. And verse 5 to 49 records the Israelites' journey over the past 40 years in the wilderness and mentions 40 places where they come on their journey from Egypt to Moab. Beloved, please find time and read the list of the places where they come in your own time. Beloved, the record of their journey is more than just a list of places. The purpose of the record was to remind the Israelites that God had guided them on their journey in the wilderness for 40 years. He had provided all their needs and protected them from all the enemies who came against them. So this was to remind them that God is always with them. So beloved, after Moses had listed all the places they came during their 40 year journey in the wilderness, just before they crossed over the Jordan to enter the promised land, God gave the following instructions to Moses to be given to the Israelites. And in verse 51, God says, When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, you must drive out all the inhabitants of the land. Destroy all their stone and metal idols and all their places of worship. Occupy the land and settle in it, because I am giving it to you. Divide the land among the various tribes and clans by drawing lots, giving a large piece of property to a large clan and a small one to a small clan. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land, those that are left will be as troublesome as splinters in your eyes and as thorns in your sides, and they will fight against you. If you do not drive them out, I will destroy you as I planned 
to destroy them. Beloved, God told the people of Israel to drive out the Canaanites from their land and settle in them, not because God was being favorable to the Israelites, but beloved, it was because God was punishing the Canaanites for their sins. The Canaanites were a wicked people who practiced evil acts by sacrificing their children to an idol called Molech. And they also prostituted themselves at a shrine of a god called Asherah. And so, beloved, because of these evils that the Canaanites practiced, God was judging them. And just like the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, God used the Israelites to punish the Canaanites for the sins that they committed. And God ordered the Israelites that after they have defeated the Canaanites, they must destroy all their idols and their altars. This was so that the Israelites will also not indulge in the same idol practices as the Canaanites. But the Israelites did not completely obey God. They did not force all the inhabitants of the land of Canaan out of Canaan. And those that remained persuaded the Israelites to worship their idols. And as God has said, the Canaanites that the Israelites were not able to destroy became a thorn in the side of the Israelites and fought against them. And that fight continues to today in Israel. Beloved, this teaches us that if we do not drive out sin completely from our lives, sin will drive us out from the good plans that God has for us. And if we do not put to death the lustful desires of our flesh, then those lustful desires of our flesh will put our bodies to death. Therefore, let's remove from our lives every sin that hinders us from living the righteous life that God wants us to live so that the will of God will be done in our life for us to live the abundant, blessed life that Jesus Christ promises us in John chapter 10, verse 10. So, beloved, this brings us to the end of today's study. I trust that you have been blessed by the word of God. Please join me again next time and let the Holy Spirit, our helper and teacher, continue to reveal the hidden truths of God's word to us. Beloved, until we meet again, may the Lord God enable you with his power to live the righteous life that he wants, so that, beloved, you will rule over all your enemies and enjoy all the blessings that God has in store for you. In Jesus' name, you are blessed.